you know, cross your fingers on that. Iowa State Director of Athletics, Jamie Pollard, with us on 365 Sports. Jamie, thank you so much. When you blink a little bit, is it hard to imagine with the conference the Big 12 is today and will be next year to where it was those dark days in the summer of 2021? Well, how about those dark days of 2009 and 10 yeah. as well? <laughs> uh, yes, sir. It is, uh, it's been a, a long and windy road. How quick, I mean, when you guys were always planning to, to be ready for any expansion when it popped up, but from your perspective, how fast did this really move? Well, you know, it, it feels like it moved really, really slow personally because it seems like we've talked about it for a year at least. But the last probably 48 hours were pretty intense and there were a lot of, uh, you know, ebbs and flows in that last 48 hours. I think that, you know, most people wouldn't know or appreciate. So uh, that part, I think, went pretty fast. Macros told us that uh, just he personally felt like, you know, Colorado was a must have, but it, he really, it was, it was all about getting all four schools and anything less than that wouldn't have felt like really completing the job, so to speak, or wouldn't have been as fulfilling. Uh, did you feel that kind of the same way? Just sort of what was your, your operating, uh, I, I guess, thoughts when it came to all of the potential ways this could have gone in combinations, but in fact, ending up with the four that, that everybody kind of originally pegged. Well, you know, I'm going to first start with, you know, I, I have a little somberness here just because I'm not, in a lot of ways, I wish we weren't in a situation where some of our peers or colleagues are being left behind and that the Pac-12 has gone away, you know, and or, or potentially it's going to go away. I was one that said all along, I didn't wish for that, but if it was going to happen, I wanted us to be well positioned. And well positioned was to go to 16 and to get presumably the four schools we ended up getting. But then as the process drug on and drug on and drug on, you know, Colorado was the only one at the, at that time that seemed like they were doing it for more than just the money. They were doing it because I think they felt that philosophically they aligned more with the Big 12. Where the others, I think, were still tethered to trying to make the Pac-12 work. And so it started to feel like it might just be Colorado. And so, um, you know, Max thoughts of it would have felt incomplete. I maybe had come to grips with it was going to be incomplete. Mm -hmm. And it, 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 when that reemerged that those three could possibly be coming as well, to me it was like a, you know, a shot of energy because I, quite frankly, had kind of given up on that. I, I, in my mind, I had just gotten to the spot where I didn't think it was going to happen. I just didn't think it was going to happen. And so that's what I refer to. That last 48 hours got to be pretty rapid fire that, my gosh, it's going to happen. Jamie, the way the revenue is going to be shared, not this year with the four incoming schools getting a partial, 18 million, whatever the number might be, but next year with the incoming four out of the Pac-12, autonomy five schools getting a full share, and the others are going to be, again, a partial share with a little bit of an uptick in how much. Was there a lot of discussion or was that a problem at all that the, uh, the four schools coming in this year were like, wait a minute, we're already here. Why would we have to not get a full share in 24-25? No, never, never was brought up by any of those schools. I, I think how they look at it is you got to remember where each of the schools is coming from. You know, those schools, the four that are joining this year are joining this year, you know, even though they're not getting quote the full share for these first two years, they're getting a lot more than they would have been getting had they stayed where they were. So, um, you know, it's all just kind of a point of, uh, of you know, what's, what's relevant. Um, it's no different than when you're hiring people. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes then later and gets more money because that's what it took to get them. And so, you know, the four new schools that will be coming in from the Pac-12, you know, just had a, a different um, starting point from where they're starting from. And so the four schools, the you know, if we're going to call, there's the newer and then the newer. Um, <laughs> so the, the, the new members that are in this year, they were great. They never raised that issue, um, you know, they recognized what it meant to go get the four schools from the Pac-12 and 
those four schools, you know, are are deserving of what they're going to get. And when it's all said and done, we'll all be sharing equally. Jamie, I uh, I received a tweet on Friday when all this was was going on. It was from somebody that said, um, I. I don't know what the Iowa State fans, how they're going to react to a game in Tempe. They've never seen anything like that before. And I said, I don't know, man. Have you ever have you ever partied with the Iowa State crowd? Like, they've seen a lot. Like, that that can go wild. How has your fan base kind of reacted to all this, and how do you feel about how they'll they'll move forward and, and travel like they, they usually do pretty well? Well, um, in our fan base, one uh, is – Excited about it. I mean, excited from the, just the mere fact it's great that Iowa State and the Big 12 is on the right side of this. Secondly, I just think fans are genuinely, all fans, just are genuinely excited by the fact that there's there's kind of like new blood. You know, it's not same old, same old. And so I think that that's going to be um, a little spark for all of us because there's going to be new road trips, new rivalries, um, you know, that will emerge. At the same time, I think our fans are very respectful of just understanding that, you know, there's a little form of relief and not as much excitement when, when you know, other schools got left behind. And I appreciate that, that our fans have actually acknowledged that because the, the fact is we could have been and almost were in 2008 and could have been again in 2020, you know, had the same lot in life that Oregon State, Washington State and Cal and Stanford are going to have. So um, I think all of that is rolled up in the emotion. But genuinely speaking, our fans are fired up. We've got a great fan base that's a lot of snowbirds down in the Phoenix area. So both our trips to Tucson and Tempe will um, be well attended by Cyclone fans, I'm sure. And Colorado, you know, that's a, ro- a drivable road trip for a lot of our fans. And we did that back in the day. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I, I think the Utah fan base for football especially is very much like the Cyclone fan base. Very much in social media. They pack their stadium. They're very active. So I'm excited, and I think our fans are too. Obviously, a lot of people had a hand in, in making all this this happen in the end for the Big 12's benefit. And I know in your statement you spoke about Bob Bowlesby and the job that he did on his way out of, of bringing in the initial four schools that helped stabilize everything. And I know that the many have said, hey, if you just stopped there, everybody would have been happy. But then there's Brett Yormark and this other vision. When you first kind of started to, to wrap your head around this next iteration and this, this Four Corners vision and, and other ideas that – he's had can you just speak Jamie to kind of your initial thoughts and and now having seen a lot of it progress the Rucker Park basketball the four corner schools so on and so forth and and what still may be to come uh can you just kind of wrap your head around you know the tenure so far and and all the different hands that that made all this possible well you know um organizations need different forms of leadership at different times and what Bob Bowlesby did for us at that particular moment I don't think any of us fully fathomed how important that was. And now we've seen it play out that he laid the foundation and kept the big 12 together and put us in a position with, um, uh, you know, the opportunity to, to have what we're now experiencing. And then, you know, when commissioner Yormark came in, he's a different, um, different set of leadership skills, different vision. And he has put, you know, his imprint on this and a very aggressive, clearly a, a big marketer, a big thinker. And, you know, we're seeing a lot of that come to fruition. And so, you know, again, excited about what is in store for the future because we've seen what he's accomplished in his first year. And, you know, you can only imagine what like the next year and the next year could look like. So buckle up. We're going to be on for a great ride. And uh, there'll be some things that'll not work, and there'll be some things that'll you know, be a huge hit, and it'll be fun to play it all out. Were the four schools who joined in the pack of what we now know, Colorado, ASU, Arizona, and Utah, were those the only four, Jamie, the Big 12, really thought they could bring in and also wanted? Well, those were the let's, – let's start with Colorado deserves a lot of credit because – you know, quite frankly, they went alone and they did it. You know, they were the unicorn. They were the Lone Ranger. And they set, you know, you could argue they set a lot of this in motion, but they uh, they were the one that went out there. And, you know, if the Pac-12 had signed that television deal last Friday, you know, Colorado would have been in the Big 12 and wouldn't have been part of that. So 
first of all, you know, that, that was where we were focused initially because we felt like that one could lead to possibly more. Or if not, we talked about other schools that could fill that final spot. And then as it started to emerge, you know, Arizona, I think, was probably next in line as far as showing the initial kind of interest. But then it quickly escalated because of the Oregon-Washington timing with the Big Ten that it became Arizona, Arizona State, Utah as kind of a package deal. So we never really had to fully vet just Arizona as 14 or was it going to be UConn as 14 if, you know, Arizona didn't come. And it never really went past that. Um, those, it was those kind of the, the package of those three or Arizona as 14 or UConn as 14. And that was really where it, the focus was. Jamie, when um, do you think, or do you think it is time for the, the leaders of college athletics to maybe get together and try to figure out what the goal is long-term so that we don't have to keep reshuffling the deck here? Well, that's a great question. And, and quite frankly, it's, it's maybe a question that's being asked too late because, you know, the deck has been shuffled in a way now that, the, you know, the, the game of cards are going to be different than what the game one might have been three, four years ago. And, you know, history is going to judge that either positively or negatively. I think today, you know, it's, it's tough to judge it either way. You have to live in the moment, and this is the cards we're dealt, so we got to play those. But um, I, I am one that feels like, you know, I, 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 I wish we wouldn't have gotten to this spot, that Calmer Head could have maybe prevailed and found a solution that didn't leave people behind. But quite frankly, you could see it starting to crumble during COVID, where, you know, the five commissioners just weren't always on the same page. And you saw that play out and it was probably foreshadowing to what we're seeing now, which is kind of every, you know, every league for themselves. And I don't think that's in the best interest of college athletics, but I'm one voice and, you know, I'm part of a a much bigger uh, ecosystem that is bigger than one voice. Mac yesterday was on with us, Mac Rhodes, and we brought up, uh, is this it? Is this where, the expansion ends, and uh, we we know about UConn. You brought that up as well. That was obvious. I know Brett Yormark has. That's kind of like his toy in a way. Um, how is that something that, if it in fact happens, it would be not in the near future, and at some point, whenever anything else changes, you go, okay, that's that's probably what we need to do. Well, if I've learned anything in eighteen years being AD, be careful what you say because. <laughs> <laughs> wrong the next morning, but it's my understanding that you know it, it's done for the foreseeable future because there's no money left. Okay, the, you know the television partners are done spreading money around and sprinkling it. You know we're gonna have, you know this may rear its head again with the next television iteration in 2030-31, but. My understanding, I, I don't anticipate anything between now and that time period because there, there's just not any money in the system to do it. And all of us are leveraged enough without diluting ourselves any further. So I, I just don't see it, you know, in our world. Now, maybe it'll happen out with the ACC. That's their issue to deal with. But as far as the Big 12, you know, they're just, there is no more uh, wind out there for our sales at this point with the television partners. You have had to deal with the newness and what is now today's college athletics with what's happening with uh, college. We've had the Alabama coach. You've had to deal with the, the gambling aspect of what is going on. How much have you had to spend even more time than normal, making sure the education is there for everybody that this is just something you cannot do. Well, I, I think it, it, it was eye opening because we were educating and, and the student athletes have admitted uh, every single one of them um, admitted that they were educated. They knew they couldn't do it, but they still did it. And it's been fascinating talking to them because to them, you know, they've referred to it as like it's a video game. And it's 
there's no money exchanging hands. There's no chips you're putting into the middle of the poker table. There's no cash you're putting out. It's tied to your bank account. And it comes at you in the morning and just asks you to press yes or no. And, and so what it's made us stop and think about is we need to rethink. It isn't even just, a, you know, the, how we thought about education has got to change. It isn't a, you can't do this. It's, we got to help them with it because it's become just so second nature that they didn't even realize what they were doing. And to a, to an athlete, every single one of them totally underestimated what they actually had done once we got the, the gaming results. And not in a negative way, like they were trying to, like, why? It just, it'd be like you or I, if somebody asked you how many text messages, how many times have you checked your phone today? Mm. And if there was a way to electronically know how many times you looked at your phone, I bet we'd all be stunned how many times we looked at our phone versus what we thought we did. And so that's what hit me with this. None of them have done anything where you just go, oh my gosh, that was criminal. That was horrible. You know, they're a bad apple. They just kind of got caught up in something that has become part of society in a way that most of us probably woefully underestimate. Yeah. That... Um, Go ahead. Sorry. And so we've got to learn not, you know, we've just got to rethink what education really means. One of the things that hit me when all this came out was it used to be, you know, um, I remember like previous gambling scandals. It was because somebody was friends with a bookmaker or, you know, they were here in this spot. And this, the overwhelming simplicity, like you just said, was the thing that I think that maybe everybody wasn't ready for. That it, once again, it, you don't have to go see or talk to or look at another human being. You just have to push a button. Right. And, you know, they, the student athletes talked about you're hooked in like it. You get up in the morning and you got notifications and you've got notifications that says, Hey, you know, do you want to, do you want to put a $5 bet on this? Or do you want to bet on this? Or do you want to bet on that? And you know, they just said, it's like, you're start answering yes and no. It's like you're playing a video game. And all of a sudden one day somebody tells you, Whoa, over the last six months, you did it this many times and you're blown away. Jamie, are you going to be on the scheduling committee that has Arizona State playing in Morgantown the first year? <laughs> no, but I'm going to make sure I have that weekend off. <laughs> We're going to have Ren Baker on. It's good that Arizona State reached out. Glad that happened because there was a thought. And yes, they probably were screaming and clawing to stay because they're loyal. But it's great that everybody, because that's the one thing right now you have, right? With the 12 teams that will be a part of it not including even the incoming four, but that everybody is on the same page and understand everybody's important if there's a life raft that everybody needs to go with them. Well, that is true. But, you know, at the same time, you got to have a little fun with this. So um, I'm sure it'll be sheer coincidence <laughs> that first football schedule, Arizona State's at West Virginia. I'm sure that'll just be, a, I mean, just a total coincidence. Thank you so much for your time, Jamie. We've always appreciated what you've been able to bring to the table when we've had you on many, many times. Tell Nick Jones thank you as well, and have a great week. All right. And for the record, I didn't say anything about Texas today, did I? No, <laughs> no you didn't. No. no, you didn't. No, you didn't. Well, I mean, you know, we're not done. <laughs> yeah. like, please tell Chris Del Conte that. No, no, no. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. Jamie Pollard, Director of Athletics at Iowa State, with a bunch of great nuggets for us today.